Yes, guys, we are the F2, and we're exploring the facts, stats, and science behind success in sport. This episode, we're in Copenhagen, and it's all about the fans. I'm Jermaine Genus, and we'll be looking at whether vocal crowds really do influence refereeing decisions, and also why athletes perform better at their home games. And we'll treat you to a trick shot as we prove that luck is no coincidence. <laughs> Home advantage is well documented at all levels of sport, but there's no bigger rush than stepping out in front of your home fans and feeling their enthusiasm lift you. And the good news for Brazil going into the games this summer is the effect of home advantage is especially strong in major athletic tournaments, where according to some studies, the host nation can expect to win around three times more medals than usual. Legendary American athlete Carl Lewis first enjoyed home support in LA in 1984 where he won an historic four golds. Well, the lead up to 84 for me was amazing. I was on the cover of a national magazine for 11 consecutive months. And so it was all of that and the expectation and then add on top of that, can he get four gold medals? Can he break the world records? So there was a lot, but being in, in my home country through it all made it easier. My family was there, uh, I knew the city. You know, it, It's just, just a comfort zone. So, that helped me get through it. Travel takes a toll on anyone, emotionally, physically. You're gonna have that home field advantage because it, it, that's something that's taken off the plate to have to worry about. Perhaps the biggest factor in home advantage are the fans. The home support give you everything what they have and the other guy doesn't get anything. People you know are in the stands, uh, their expectations high for you, so you want to perform in front of them. If I think of home advantage and I think of the crowd cheering me on, that's a huge effect because you're familiar with the sound the crowd makes and you know you feel safe and you probably have been able to keep your own routines and you don't have to adjust to something foreign or something new. In 2012, Swedish triathlete Lisa Norden experienced what it was like to compete against the partisan British crowd. The crowd in London, the most spectacular thing about it was the size of it. It was five, six rows deep. It was incredible, like we never had that you know, amount of people coming out to support a triathlon before. So in the race we had Helen Jenkins, who was the, one of the big medal hopes for the UK. And you can just tell when you're running, like she had the crowd support. It wasn't mine, it was hers. I mean, performance-wise, it's all about relaxing and putting it all out there. So if the crowd makes you feel relaxed and safe and you know, cheers on you, that's probably like, that will have an effect on you. We're on the tennis court, not for ourselves. We're there because of the fans. And they give you that extra motivation, that extra energy, 150%, not 100, but 150. They push him to the limit. You're gonna think twice before, before you kind of give it up. Towards the end of his career, Carl managed a final gold medal at his second home games in Atlanta. I just got kind of tired of the, the traveling and being on the road for six weeks and going through all of that. I just didn't have the strength anymore. So being in the United States made a big difference and there's no way I, I, I believe that I would have gotten through or even tried had I not been there. We want to test the effects of vocal support on the human body. And we have 38,000 fans to help us. We're at FC Copenhagen's Parken Stadium, where two players will go head to head in an on-pitch experiment to measure the impact of fans on players. Representing Copenhagen, the player in white will be cheered on by the passionate home crowd. Representing the away team, the player in black will feel the fans' anger. Will cheers or jeers have a bigger effect on their performance? The effect of a crowd is, it can be so significant. I would look at Leicester City this year. That home support is so fantastic, it's so consistent. The supporters at FC Copenhagen are famous for the noise they make. Being at home makes a positive and a psychological influence on the preparation for a big crowd that just celebrates and, and, and 
cheers you all. It will, will, will feel good for most players. If the crowd believes it has an impact, then it will respond. The players respond more to, to, to the crowd and so the, the, the two things ramp up. To measure the effect of that kind of atmosphere on our players, we're first sending them out to take penalty kicks in an empty stadium. We've rigged them with a range of monitors so we can measure physiological factors like heart rate and environmental factors like the volume level in the stadium. With no pressure from the stands, both players' heart rates are low, their body language is relaxed and the shootout ends on as even. It's time to go again. This time with a crowd of 38,000 willing to play in white to win. How much of a difference will they make? Home advantage is a real thing. The statistics show that 50% of teams win at home. It's a benefit to play at home. First up, to a chorus of boos, our away team villain. I would like to be in Najee's. Imagine his heart monitor right now. Off the Richter, mate. Off That's the Richter. Yeah. Pressure getting to you. Playing in front of a, a hostile crowd that's, that's against you will not necessarily feel so good. Sometimes, you know, a crowd can go against you. If you haven't experienced it, especially early in your career, then it, it, it can and it will affect you. You're getting negative vibes towards you. They're trying to put you off. You've got to be mentally strong to overcome that. Next up for his first penalty, our hometown hero. He should be going into this confident, really, Jez, because he's a home player. Yeah, but he's got pressure, he's got pressure, they're all backing him, but if he misses... Oh! oh what a penalty! Jez, he's definitely going to go into his second penalty. Confidence, sky high, he's got the crowd behind him, let's see how he does. Surely you can't miss two in a row. The crowd are giving him some serious abuse. <laughs> I like it, I like it. No! <laughs> you don't miss like that! First 10,000 people watching your that was terrible. He's got a bit more swagger in the way he's placing the ball this time. Football is a huge confidence game, and a lot of that comes from the fans. If the fans are behind you, fans go there to be entertained. They're loyal fans, their backing is fantastic, but they go there to be entertained. Oh, the, and the middle! The crowd's not happy. That's the problem. When you're at the home support behind you and you miss, you feel like, you know what I mean, you've let everyone down. Exactly. And having all that support can sometimes backfire and actually create more of a home choke. Here we go. Okay, well played, well played. What a great penalty, though. It could be you know, a vital three points to save you your team from relegation, it could be the, to qualify for a European Cup. But if you really find yourself as a team with a crowd, they can lift you on to uh, amazing things. This one's a lottery, Jez. This one scored one. Here we go. Can he handle the pressure? Backed by a chorus of boos, the player in black crumbled, scoring only a single spot kick. With the full support of the crowd behind him, the player in white scored two. So cheers, he cheers by two goals to one. Now we all know it's the referee's job to be impartial, but the pressure on them is massive, especially on a night like this. So we've decided to set up a unique experiment to test how crowds psychologically affect referees. And what better game to test than this, the European final. We're in Madrid and it's a local derby. <laughs> I think we should have a lot of sympathy for uh, referees. I think they must have the worst job in the world. Taking the stick from the media and dealing with some of those high profile players, thick skin is essential. I believe referees get a very tough deal from the public, from critics, from people at home watching a game, seeing slow motion replays of every angle and saying, oh, well, how did the referee miss that? Research has shown that referees get an average of 92% of their decisions correct. But how much are they subconsciously affected by the noise from the terraces? 
We've asked match officials to watch the final and react to every decision. The green light signals they agree with the referee. Bill, I totally agree with the referee. Me too, Jez. The orange light indicates they do not agree with the referee. What? Bill, I totally disagree with the referee. Mate, that's your opinion, not mine. Let's see what happens. We've split the referees into pairs. The first pair are going to watch the game surrounded by passionate Madrid fans. The second pair are going to watch the game surrounded by equally passionate Atletico fans. Will the presence of cheering fans affect whether our referees agree or disagree with the on-field official? When the match is in progress, you are very, very busy. You're looking at so many things. You're making over 250 decisions in the 90 minutes. Some of that is where to run, where to stand, what to look at, what to look for. Five minutes in and Mark Klattenberg awards a free kick for a foul on Madrid's Gareth Bale. In the Madrid room, the referees agree with the decision. But in the Atletico room, they disagree. Uh, referees are getting most of their decisions correct, but there will be just occasionally a difficult decision when it's not that clear. And I think it's those decisions where the referee then perhaps looks for other cues. On the hour mark, a clumsy foul by Fernando Torres on Sergio Ramos. Again, the referees in the Madrid room agree with Mark Lattenberg. But the referees in the Atletico room don't. The game ends with a narrow victory for Madrid on penalties. But we're interested in a different result. It's time to tot up our referees' decisions. In 120 minutes of football, our referees responded 348 times to Mark Lattenberg's decisions. Only 32 of them were disagreements. If our referees were unaffected by the presence of fans, we would expect these disagreements to not favour either team, a 50-50 split. However, in the Atletico room, 63% of the disagreements were for incidents that went against Atletico Madrid. And in the Madrid room, we found 80% of the disagreements were for incidents that went against Madrid. This shows that despite their best efforts, our referees were clearly siding with the fans on certain key decisions. This supports previous research, suggesting that referees can be subconsciously affected by the noise from the terraces. I think if you ask referees if they are influenced by crowds, they would say no. Sometimes in, in a game you can see that they are influenced. I think people forget referees are human. Uh, and referees are influenced by huge numbers of things, as any human would be. There are times when I think it would be unnatural and not realistic to say you weren't affected ever by a crowd in your entire career. 1,554 games, you know, 329 Premier League games, 100 internationals. There must be times when you were affected. Um, what I would hope is that effect didn't have a, an effect on the outcome of the match. Professional referees now, because they're full time and they're getting paid a lot of money, they are trained beautifully and they almost certainly are guarding against this. And so I think the chances of our referees having a subconscious benefit to the home team is becoming a little bit less. But nevertheless, I still think it exists. Let's see how the Unibet experts use the crowd effect to make predictions. Crowd effect has a significant and sizeable impact on the likelihood of a team winning a match, but is often overlooked as a factor when placing bets. A team playing home and away, I always look at the statistics. You have some teams never winning uh, away games, and you have some teams much better playing at home. And maybe the best example this year is uh, Sevilla at home. They're a top team in Spain, and away, they have not won one single game. So when it comes to betting on teams playing in neutral venues, it's really important to see how much ticket allocation each team got and the reputation of fans, as the crowd effect can have a significant impact. 
You know that the home fans want the home team to play very attacking, which would give the away team uh, good chances to find spaces. So teams who play on counter-attack, like Leicester and Real Madrid, can also be very good when they play away. Join us again as we share more stats, facts and insight to help give you that edge. As we prove once again, luck is no coincidence.